Hey, what is up YouTube? It is Rob Stark and in today's video I wanted to do a map breakdown of the map Shooting Star. I wanted to give you all my tips for the map, the best comps, where you should be hiding, where your team should be running in general, any tips I have. I wanted to go in depth on what to do on this map. Alright, so to get started, first off I just have a general overlay of the map and I'm in a drawing app. So one of the main things about Shooting Star is there's not many places to hide. There, in general, there's not a lot of grass, and there's very little amount of wall coverage as far as places you can duck behind when you're healing. There's pretty much the two main walls in the center, and then additionally, there are walls where you can hide behind in your own spawn, but that's pretty much it. And you're not going to be using those ones in your spawn very often unless you're under heavy pressure. So, in general, there's just the two main ones. Those are the most important. Now, so as far as good comps on this map, because there's very little cover, it heavily favors long-range brawlers. The main thing with this is, since there's bounty, there's no central objective, you can be anywhere on the map. So, with these long ranges, if anyone who is a shorter range starts approaching you, you can in general just start backing up and keeping them out of range while you're still able to shoot them. And then, while they're taking those damage, even if they do catch up to you, it makes it a lot harder for them to get away after they kill you. Maybe it makes it easier for a teammate to kill them. Stuff like that. So in general this map really really heavily favors long range brawlers like Piper, Brock, Colt, Ricochet, Bow. It also favors Crow some too. While Crow may not be as long range as them, he has a faster move speed making it easier for him to dodge shots. Also his super makes it easier for him to escape. And in general he pairs well with long range brawlers. Since sometimes it's hard for long range brawlers to deal with all the way killing someone from full health, Crow makes it easier just keeping them at a lower health range. So I would pretty much only use those brawlers. You will see some people run a Dynamite, a Barley, or maybe a medium range brawl on this map sometimes. And pretty much what they'll be doing is they will be behind this wall probably trying to shoot around you. And if able to, they're going to try and come up to this wall and force pot shots around the corners. Or just throw Dynamite sticks if they're a Barley whatever. They're mostly going to be doing that. So one of the things to keep in mind with this map is whether to destroy walls or not. In general, you probably almost always want to destroy the enemy's main wall. This is pretty much just a hiding place for them. It's generally not very useful for you. You're probably not going to use it too often. At least you're not going to use it as often as the enemy would in terms of to hide behind and heal up. You may not want to destroy your own wall as that is the wall you use to heal up and hide behind a lot. You may end up destroying it if you're being heavily pressured. If you find the enemy is behind this wall and using it to shoot you a lot, maybe just get rid of it. It's honestly not a big deal. In general, anytime you outrange the enemy, you pretty much always want to destroy walls. So, and one thing this does as well is as soon as this wall is destroyed, any medium range brawler is not going to be nearly as effective. It's going to be a lot harder for them to hide. Any dynamite, barley, shelly, whatever is all of a sudden going to be not very good in general. It's going to be a lot harder for them to get kills. They're going to have to dodge shots just to get close to you, just to get within range. And then they have to dodge shots to get out of it again. So I pretty much recommend only very long range brawlers. Sorry about that, I got a phone call. Alright, but back to it. So yeah, so in general, if those walls are destroyed, it's much harder for any medium range brawler to be effective. Now you may see people hiding behind that wall over there and possibly hiding over here if they get heavily pressured. You can destroy those two walls right there if you want. It's not a big priority. I would definitely prioritize this wall over this wall. But either way, you don't have to go out of your way to destroy them. It can help. It makes it obviously harder for them to hide. There's less places. But it's not a big deal. Not nearly as big a deal as destroying that wall right there. So another thing I see people do is you know having bad spacing on this map before you start any map in general if you're with a team try and determine who is going which direction who is going left middle right are there two people going middle and then if so where is the one other person going stuff like that so one thing i see people do is a lot of times i see people all grouped up in the middle in general now what this does is it makes it easier for the enemy to hit you right if you're all grouped up there's less places for them to shoot and in general, they can sort of corner you in. They can shoot on your sides and force you in together. And then at the least, if they're shooting at two of you, they're probably more likely to hit at least one. Another thing this does is it makes it easier for the enemy to move up the map. It gives you less range to cover. If you're more spread out, there's less areas for the enemy to hide. 
However, if you're all clumped up, you're only going to be general to shoot at the same places. If you're all in the middle, it's going to be hard to hit someone who's over here. If this wall is still up, for example, or it's just in general, harder to hit people who are on the edge of your range. So one thing you would really want to do on this map is you sort of want to split people up. You want someone who's going in the middle. In general, this is probably going to be a Piper or a Brock. Someone who can finish people off pretty well. Um, they're mostly going to be shooting at this area over here if anyone's hiding. And they're also, if once this wall is down, they're mostly going to be focusing just in general on the middle. You also want someone who is going right. And this main person is probably going to be a Brock, a Ricochet, a Bow, or a Colt, any of those people. And they're mostly going to be focusing on people who are behind this wall right over here as soon as they get out of cover they're mostly going to be focusing on them they're also going to be focusing on the middle if anyone gets too aggressive if anyone comes in here they should be focusing on them and also if anyone is hiding behind this wall that's going to be the person on the right's job to not allow them to hide behind that wall and heal up not make it easy for them to you know throw dynamite sticks behind there or whatever if you're on the right don't be too aggressive and moving over here too often as if there's enemy any enemies over here they're going to be shooting at you pretty fast and you can't end up getting ganged up on by someone over here over there and over here coming in to meet you now you also want someone on the left and this person's main job is going to be shooting this alley for the most part they're also going to be stopping anyone who's getting too aggressive in the middle if there's anyone who's coming over in this area, they can shoot them, and that will be part of their job. But one of the main things, especially early on, is stopping any enemies from camping behind this wall. That's mostly going to be the person's on the left job, as it's easy for them when they're over here to get a good angle and shoot them and be out of their range for the most part, or at least be on the far edge of their range. And in general, those are easier shots to hit. You can even shoot this off the map if you know they're over there. Off the map is in out of your view. Yeah, so those are the main areas I would be having people go, is you want to have them in the three quadrants in general. Even once these walls are down, you still want to keep your spacing. You want to keep your angles. This way, it's going to make it hard for enemies to advance up the map. It's not going to give them many places to hide. And you can sort of force enemies into each other. If someone's on the left, you can force them into the middle, into a piper, or maybe you can come over and help out if they're struggling. You don't want to have, them, you don't want to have your team too grouped up in general. All right, everyone, those are my main tips for Shooting Star. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm just going to leave you with some gameplay and some music just to chill out. All right, thanks for watching, and catch you next time.
Let's have a bit of fun till I downfall. My love, if you feel like I do right now, don't say you're on the run to the other side. My love, you say you want to try, but you never do. Sugar, there's a Shadow turns the sun rays and on and on. 